Hello everyone, Hadi Felibrit here again after a long while, and I apologize for going away for so long. However, I'm back again and I think I have a couple of plans. Not a couple actually, just a plan. And the plan is to move forward with our already started thing grids. So if you take a look at the last community post I shared, I mentioned that we are going to be kind of, or what would I use now? Improving on what we want. Or rather, improving on what we have. So, we're going to be introducing three major flows. Um, and that's going to be the payment gateway, the settlement system, and a financial institution. So, in terms of the simulation, because that's what I'll call it, that we've been doing so far, think great is going to fit into the financial institution part of the whole system. So, that was just the brief. And um, before we get on into doing all this. Um, I have gone back to make some adjustment to think great as a whole, because during this period, even though I wasn't recording any video, I haven't left the software engineering world. I've been doing a couple of things. And after efficiently using Tailwind, Shard UI, I realized, okay, this is kind of the best deal to make your front-end uh, implementation efficient and effective. So I would say, so yeah, let me just pull up Shad UI so that you see what I'm talking about. And this is not uh, a promotion for Shad UI. It's just the fact that I enjoyed using it and I thought I should share with you. So here is Shad UI. So this is what it looks like. And it's an assembly of components. So you have an accordion, you have a badge and so on. So you can easily integrate them into your system and use them. Okay. So like I said, I have made a couple of changes to what we used to have. And I'm going to show us what we now have compared to what we used to have. So back here, I have a folder for it, FinTech. Let me actually pull this away. So FinGrid still, and based on that, we have two new folders. The backend remains the same with just a few, um, Adjustments. I don't think it's a beauty for the backend anyways, but the fact that is where there, there are a couple of, um, adjustments. So I'm now using Vites because it's faster than, um, yeah, I moved away from NestJS entirely owing to the fact that this is more like an app. And if you follow the trends for most of these kind of projects, you find out that there is a landing page. And once you try to log in, it redirects you to a different subdomain app than the name of the financial institution. So having that in, at the back of our mind, using a NetGS uh, for an app like this would be an overkill because we literally are not really using what it, uh, it offers, okay? We are not using the server-side uh, rendering. We are not using the SEO part because you are not going to be uh, doing SEO on an app. Okay. I believe you understand that. So yeah, based on that, I have migrated to using just React and I'll pull both of them. But before pulling up, um, the front end, let's get our server running. And yeah, another change is you will have noticed is the fact that we are now on a Windows machine and things are a little bit difficult here. I must say because I've been using Mac for a long while now. So. Coming back to Windows is a bit difficult. So anyways, um, before the backend gets to work, we need to run our Docker. So I'll do Docker desktop. We shouldn't shit. take a while. So let's wait for it. All right. So the Docker desktop is running and this is just for the Postgres service. So I can start this as well. So remember, we set up our Postgres service just so that we can use it. Let's wait for it. Yeah, this is running as well. Now I can pull up the backend so I can open this with VS Code. Okay, and I will zoom in a little bit so we get to see what we are working with. All right, so yeah, let me just remove all these so that we have a clean slate. Okay, and clean this up. 
So I believe you are used to this already. Maybe Docker file. Yeah, Docker file is a new addition because I kind of set this up to compile our app itself. But while we are working locally, we will still be using that. So bear that in mind. So we'll probably introduce this um, during the time of deploying. Yeah, I think so. So what we are used to is the Docker Compose. And this is, or rather, this was what I introduced. This was what we are used to with a little bit of exception. So the exception is that we are now communicating directly with the EMV. And also the EMV has been changed from EMV.EMV to just .EMV, which kinds of work with um, Docker Compose easily. And for our EMV, this is what it looks like. So for the PG data, this can be dependent based on the machine you are using. This is based on the fact that I'm using a Windows machine and I want to persist my Postgres data even after switching up the Docker uh, service. Okay. So that's about that. Then I think I made a couple of adjustments to the utils. So the utils that grow, I introduced a new function called get the resource because if you are following with what we've been doing, if you compare your ERV to what we have, yours would have a DB source because we are, we were getting the DB source directly from the EMV. But with, um, explicitly stating out those variables now, we probably need to coin the DB source, um, for ourselves. And that's what we did here. Then a little bit of change on the config because we are now getting other information. Then finally, the, use of .env itself. So this is how to use it if for any chance you have an issue using it. So yeah, those are the changes we made on the back end. And let's run the back end if yeah, it's not running. So let's start it. And to do that we have make stats. Alright, so our back end is running here and we are good on that note. So let's go back to here and pull up the old version. So I'm going to open this with VS Code as usual. So this is the old version and yeah, when I pull up the new version, I'm going to kind of highlight some of the changes we made, not every anyways, but um, the advantage you're going to have is that I'll make every code available on the repo so that you can go check it out. And make necessary updates if you need to. Okay. So we have this. Let's also run it to confirm that it's working. So we have yarn dev. So let's pull up the browser. All right. So token has expired. And yeah, this is a confirmation that it's working. So also let's um start the last one, the new one rather. So thing grid bytes. So open with VS Code. So we have the terminal again. This also you start with yarn dev. And if you are using npm, you do npm run dev. So this is bytes. We pull it up again. And yeah, the same thing, session expired. The only difference now is we are using a different toast um, components. So let's log in into both. So I have an account at uh, fingrid.com. Okay, this is what this looks like. Then let's do for this as well. And this is what this looks like. So a little bit of adjustment because we can see that there is a bit of difference between the header and the body itself, whereas everything seems to be integrated with each other here. Yeah, I'll be going with this. I think it's simple and straightforward. So also when you click on accounts, this is what you have. Whereas if you click on account for this, it takes a while because I think there was some issue with the integration and this is what you have. You have to go to transaction to view the transaction and so on. So yeah, we get the gists. I feel this is better. It has, um, much more professionalism to it. It looks more like a fintech app itself. So yeah, those are the changes we have in terms of the interface. 
So most of the functionality has to the same. Here you can add money. And actually, this brings about the first um, plan towards our improvement. So to add money here, you specify the currency or rather the account you want to add the money to. And you specify the amount. So I want to add 10,000 USD to my USD account. And when we do this, this is going to pull up Paystack. Paystack in this case is our gateway. And because it's a third party, we have to work with their, with the way they work, if you understand that. So back to the old plan. Like I said, we're going to have our own personal gateway because with every transaction we do here, which I've been getting a lot of transactions, by the way, this gets sent to my email. So let's not bother our pay stack at all. Let's try to see how these things um, actually work. And to actually see that this works, we can do success and do pay. Yeah, so as you can see, we have the transaction successful. So if you remember, I think then we're trying to implement the send money flow before we, or rather, before I kind of went out of the grid. So this is the idea around that. So when you want to send money to an interbank or an interfinancial institution, in this case, you are trying to send money within the same financial institution. In that case, the process is kind of simple. What they need to know is, okay, you have enough money and you can send it. That's all that is involved. However, when you want to send money in an intra-financial institution situation, then because you are not working with the other financial institution, you don't know how they operate, you can't just send money. So you need a third party to kind of come as an intermediary between you. Or better still, if you have a way to reach out to the other financial institution and you can kind of work together, then that's also a part of it. But what most uh, countries or settlements have gone with is to have a third-party settlement platform. So this platform has information about the two financial institutions and they can now settle the transaction between them. So yeah, that is the third system we are going to be building. We are going to be building a settlement platform. We are going to be simulating how they work. So that was the plan in that respect. So yeah, again, this is what the UI looks like. It's still kind of the same functionality, just a little bit of difference in touch. And in terms of the code, I made a little bit of adjustments. So let's compare and contrast. This is the new system. Let's actually go to the old system and see how things used to work. Okay, this is the new one. Let's look at the old one. So this is the old one. And according to adding of money, so this is the function or the component that adds money into the system. So if you look at our setup here, we have use pay stack, which kinds of take the state of the amount and currency. And once we want to make the um, or perform the operation itself, we can init transaction the one we got from the use pay stack work. So the thing about this is it's dependent on the changes we make. So when we make changes to the amounts, then it's reflected here. So this is literally working on the states of the system, which is not what I want. Well, maybe this works then, but that's not the functionality that really makes sense. The expected functionality here is that when you want to pass on the transaction, when you click on your submit button, should take the amounts you have in your field, the currency, and send it to a function to complete the operation. So, yeah, having that at the back of uh, my mind, I decided to adjust this. And if we come back to the latest, this is what I came up with. So, use add money, I updated the use pay stack itself. And instead of doing the whole change of data on the add money component, this has been done on the use space stack component itself. So as you can see, the use space stack component, it takes in the data, which takes in the amount, the currency, and the callback. Okay. So now what happens? We have a function called get in a transaction. So this is still kind of doing the usual thing for what I showed you, but yeah, this is what consolidation of process does. So we have our custom use pay stack hook, and this allows us to kind of transform things in a better way. 
So now we have the get in a transaction. This is a function that we can call whenever we need to. So now this takes in the amount, takes in the currency, and it takes a callback more like, okay, once things are done, then yeah, we're good with this. And what this does is we set this data and all we do is listen to the data. So once we have an amount, we know that we are ready to perform a transaction and the rest is history. So let's actually see how we use this. So now if you take a look at our use add money, so the add money flow also has been turned into a hook because it makes more sense that way. We use add money, so it's just something you use whenever you need it. So we have a form like this, reference to a form, and as a result of that, we are not working with a state again in regards to the usual way. So we are not storing our data directly and doing all that. We get it from the form. And yeah, whenever we submit, we get those data. So we can easily make our validations and so on. Then we have a temporary function that calls the uncompleted process. Now we can actually call a get in a transaction. So yeah, I think we have a couple of uh, adjustments. I'm using shard UI, but this is the one I think is more like a change in the flow of things, but still performing the same function anyway. So more of this is what we'll be introducing to ourselves when we kind of um, push ourselves further to perform this um, simulation. It's going to be a, a special one anyways. So guys, that's the plan. Again, the updates we've made will be made available on the repo. I'll put it in the description section so that you can easily see it. And so that you don't miss in any of the following plans, Try to stay connected to the channel, subscribe if you've not, and yeah, I'll be seeing you soon in the next episode. Bye for now.